from today we would love to get to know you listen we're gonna go back into a time of worship again in a bit but usually at this time of the service we take time to really intentionally pray for our people you see we believe in the power of prayer we've been going through this great series in our church called the supernatural you know so many times we get caught up in what's happening in the natural that we forget that there is a spiritual world that we can tap into and we have a father who is listening to us you know just last week as pastor james preached on divine healing we've gotten so many testimonies in fact if you go on our instagram page you're gonna see all of those testimonies of healing one person in particular shared that as she was listening to the preaching, she just went ahead and claimed that the cancer growth that was seen in her last CT scan would go away. And she just prayed.
prayed in faith. And you know what? The next day, she went in for her CT scan and the doctor couldn't find anything. Isn't that amazing? So today, no matter what you're going through, maybe you're listening to me and you are, you've been losing faith and you're thinking, I don't know if prayer works. Well, that's why we're here for you because we want to be able to stand with you in faith and stand with you in prayer. So if you're watching live right now, if you're watching at 9 a.m., 12 p.m. or 5.30 p.m., would you go to live.favor.church? We have a wonderful prayer team that would love to be able to pray with you. Otherwise, you can email us your prayer request at prayer at favor.church and we'll get back to you within the week but right now I want to pray for everyone watching if you have been struggling with feeling unwell I pray for healing in Jesus name if you have been struggling at work if you have lost your job and you're looking for provision right now I speak financial provision God will never leave you in lack and right now whatever it is that you need would you go ahead and lift up your hands father we thank you that you are a God that hears Lord, you see our needs, you see our prayer requests. God, thank you that you are always listening and there's nothing too small or too big for you. And so today, I pray that people would have an encounter with you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Come on, everyone. Let's shout, Amen. Amen. Let's worship.
gonna see a victory I'm gonna see a victory For the battle belongs to you, Lord I'm gonna see a victory I'm gonna see a victory For the battle belongs to you, Lord Don't be believe that I'm gonna see a victory I'm gonna see a victory for the battle belongs to you, Lord. Because it's in these your memories, in your name. Heart. I'm keeping nothing back from who you are No hidden treasure veiled by key your lock You're a lifetime worth of worship and that's only just a start And here it is my every waking the minutes are the years of endless praise For you're worthy far beyond all I can say There's a lifetime worth of worship in the new ones of your names So let it rise like incense my whole life Fragrance every ounce here broken at your feet. And every 
every prayer and offering my heart cries please i'm saying over you my worthy king of kings oh Lord. jesus you were Jesus, you worthy of our praise. Sing this with me. And there it is, your alabaster cross. Giving all you are for all our night. I can't believe that's the kind of king you Could I not bring a lifetime worth of worship to you, God? So let it rise. I can't set my whole life a fragrance every ounce here broken at your feet. In every breath and offering, my heart cries. These lungs sing over you. Sense my whole life, the fragrance every ounce here broken at your feet. Every breath and offering, my heart cries, please don't sing over you. Oh, you can have it all. 
powerful he is faithful or maybe you're here and you're watching and you're asking what does that mean for me Paul it means that you can hold on to his promises anyone believing for the promises of God anyone believing for healing anyone believing for provision anyone believing for breakthrough anyone believing for restoration the promises of God we can hold on to it because we can hold on to him we can hold on to him remember one time uh, I got injured trying to do a backflip, back tuck, and I sprained my ankle so bad that I had to use crutches. And I kind of enjoyed using those crutches, and I used it for so long, I became dependent to them. To the point that I was already healed, but I was still walking like I wasn't, because I became dependent to them. Some of you here, God has promised to you healing and freedom and you're already healed, already freed, but you're still not walking in it. God's promises to you, it also requires your participation. Because God's faithful, God's powerful. We can hold on to His promises, but maybe today He's asking us, what are you gonna do about it? Because He still remembers everything is promised to you, but how have you responded to it? How have you responded to it? And here's what I know. Because our God died on the cross and death could not hold Him down. We can hold on to Him. We can believe for anything. His promises for your finances are true. For your marriage, it's true. For your relationships, it's true. For your family, it's true. But will you respond to what God is doing in your life? Come on, wherever you are, whenever you're watching this, can you lift your hands to heaven? Can you start believing? Can you start responding? Can you start praising God? Can you start holding on and declaring His promises? Can we hold on to Him? Come on, will you worship Him? Death could not hold you. Death could not hold you. Death could not hold you. The veils are before you. Sing it out. You have no Wherever you are. 
and we believe that anything is possible. Anything is possible in your name, God. Over every family, every business, every person, God, we declare healing to come, provision to come, restoration to come, God, in the name of Jesus. Oh, we praise you, God. We praise you. Amen. 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 Our God is faithful. He is faithful. You, hold, you can hold on to His promises. You can believe in Him. But this time, can you respond to Him? Can you participate in what God is doing? Because He's still doing something. But maybe He's asking you today, what are you going to do about it, my son, my daughter? Can you respond to Him? Amen. Amen. We're going to continue our worship through our giving in our church. I just want to remind you that we give out of conviction and not out of compulsion. And there are many ways to give. You can give through bank transfer, all the online platforms. And starting, uh, I think, a few weeks ago, you can now give through cryptocurrency. Especially now, it's dump weekend. And so you can give right away today. Uh, but it, whichever way you want to give, you can all find the details in give.favor.church. If you're going to give, or maybe you've already given, why don't we all pray? God, thank you, Lord, that you are our provider. Thank you, God, that even though it's tough in the world right now, you've still given us food to eat, God. You've still placed us under, placed us under a roof, Lord. We thank you that you're going to continue to provide for us, Lord, God. I pray, Lord, that for every person that's going to give and for every person who, who, who has already given, Lord, you bless them, God. Pour out your favor on us so that we can give more, God. We pray that you would use every peso, God, to advance your kingdom, to reach people's lives and change destinies. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Hey, welcome to church today. We're so glad that you're tuning in to Favor Church Online, whether you're watching this live or on delay. Uh, it's going to be amazing. If it is your first time to tune in with us, can you please let us know? Can you type on the chat, hey, I'm new, or can you comment down below, or can you check that box there? Because we really want to connect with you. And we really want to get to know you because we want to help you in your journey. In fact, if you are in Metro Manila, we want to send a new people gift pack straight to your house just to say thank you for coming along. But if you are that new person, can you check your message request after the, the, after the service because we want to connect with you. Or you can hop on to our online VIP launch and meet the team, meet some new people and, and, and just have fun on Favor dot church slash favor vip launch you can hop on that after the service there's so many nice things happening in the life of our church in fact uh new people night is happening you can find out more about that uh, on favor news if you are a young adult we're all hanging out after the 5 30 p.m service if you're 18 to 29 years old there's many things happening but you can all find that after when we watch this week's edition of Favor News. Hey, what is up, Favor fam? Welcome to this week's edition of Favor News. We've got so many great things happening in the life of our church, so let's get started with New People Night. Happening this Tuesday at 7.30 p.m. is our New People Night. If you're new to our church and have already decided that this is your home, or you're still deciding, this is for you. Find out about the story of our church, what we value, and where we're headed. Join us online on Zoom. To RSVP, visit favor.church slash NPN RSVP. Favor College is our intensive training ground for those who want to serve God through church ministry. We're currently accepting applications for our new intake of students and the deadline to apply is May 31. For more information or to apply, visit favor.church slash college. Equipping series starts soon and we'll be spending seven weeks in a series called The Survey of the Bible by Bruce Wilkinson. This is a great way to dive deeper into the history and the context of the Bible. We are starting next Tuesday, May 25, and it'll go on for seven Tuesdays. Visit favor.church slash equipping series to register. Hey, if you're 18 to 29 years old, 
this season is so crucial for you because what will happen at this stage of your life might determine the next decades to come. That's why it's so important for you to belong in a community where you can find purpose, grow as a Christian, have solid relationships, and make a difference. Favor Movement is the young adults community of Favor Church. And you can find out who we are, what we value, where we're going, what's in it for you, and our community night happening on May 29, 4 to 6 p.m. This is perfect for you if you're a college student or a young professional. RSVP at the link below. Hey, what is up? Mao here, and today we are gonna be unboxing the latest product from Favor Apparel, the Faith Over Fear Liftable Face Shield. So right away you see that it comes in the carrying pouch. Got that favorite apparel logo. Now inside here we've got, we got a free face shield cleaning solution and a microfiber cloth. So you can always keep your face shield clean. This right here is the face shield itself. Right off the bat, I love the look of this face shield. On the right side, it says favored. And on the left side, we've got that faith over fear. So it's got an adjustable strap at the back to fit any head size. And the front part over here has a really nice cushion. And now this is how I look wearing it. The best part is it fits over glasses. And if you have a face mask, any size of that will fit under the shield as well. And the best part is it is liftable. So that means if you got food and you wanna eat, you just lift it a bit. And you can eat just like that without taking your face shield off. And that is the Faith Over Fear face shield. Honestly, my favorite face shield to wear every day. So get yours now on Shopee at Favorite Apparel. This week is Connect Week. Connects are one of the most important parts of our church. It's a great place for you to meet family, grow deeper in your walk with God, and stay connected with the church. We've got connects for all ages and all seasons of life. If you want to join a connect group, visit favor.church slash connect. Aside from this service, we've got a service for kids, high school students, a service with Filipino sign language interpretation, and a Tagalish service happening every Sunday at 3 p.m. For more information on these or more about our church, visit our website, favor.church, or follow us on any of our social media channels popping up on your screen right now. And that is it for Favor News. Hey, welcome to church. We're so excited that you are with us online. If we've never met, my name is James, and I'm a part of the team at Favor, and we're just so glad that you're here. And it's, uh, it's obviously been a big week uh, for us. We live here in Metro Manila, and we are now in a, uh, a new, uh, a modified, highly restricted general quarantine. Uh, I think someone's going to write a book one day on all these different labels we got. And so it means that uh, churches are still only allowed 10%. And so we are doing a church in here uh, with our, our team, just really small amount of people in here that fit under the 10%, actually, of this building. Uh, but our hope is that we're going to get back uh, to Crown Plaza at some point. And so uh, keep uh, the government in your prayers. Keep praying for them. Keep praying for the vaccine rollout as well, uh, that it would be done quickly and, and with great speed and precision. <laughs> and... Uh, and, and that we'll get back to church, and we'll let you know, obviously, when we're coming back, but we're really excited about being able to get back together and meet physically whenever that is allowed. Obviously, we've proven already that it's safe because we did it uh, for about four months before and uh, didn't have any, any crazy incidents or anything like that. So we are very uh, excited about doing it again. So just keep praying for the government, because I tell you, we're at the stage right now where nothing but prayer is going to help us as a nation. And if you're outside our country, please pray for the Philippines, because it may be more fun here, uh, but we, we need some help. And, uh, and so uh, just pray. Uh, and speaking of prayer, we're in the middle of this series called The Supernatural. And We've been talking about different aspects of what it means to live a supernatural life. Uh, we talked all the way back in week one, what is the supernatural? That in our world, there's two realms, a physical realm and a spiritual realm. And the supernatural is when the spiritual realm comes and collides with the physical realm, thus taking something that is normally natural and making it super 
supernatural. Jesus is the very essence of what it means to be supernatural. He was heaven, spiritual realm that came and collided with earth. We talked about how we want to live a supernatural life, but it may look messy. Sometimes it may look weird, but we don't have to look weird. That the power of God is actually attractive. The supernatural life is actually attractive to people who are searching for answers in their life. In the second week, we talked about divine healing. Liz already mentioned it earlier in the service, how we've already seen some incredible testimonies of people that have been healed in the last few weeks and continuing, I believe, we're going to continue to see many, many healing miracles in our church. Jesus was compassionate and he healed every person that came to him. And Jesus is the representation of who God is, the fullness of who God is. And so if that's the character and the nature of Jesus, well, it didn't stop when the Bible finished. It's still here today. And it's our duty to take that and to go out and to pray healing over every person that we meet. Last week, we talked about supernatural prayer that your breakthrough is just on the other side of supernatural prayer, that even speaking in tongues is this incredible supernatural way. Once you're baptized in the Holy Spirit and the faith that it comes on you, it takes faith to begin to speak in tongues, but it can increase dramatically your prayer life, your intercessory life. And as a church last week, we started our very first church-wide Wednesday morning prayer meeting at 7 a.m. We had over a couple hundred people that were online on Zoom. We're going to be doing this every week. So if you missed it, It's on this week at 7 a.m. It's going to be incredible. You need to get on there. We're praying every week. When is it? It's on Wednesday. Uh, What time? It's at 7 a.m. in the morning. What are we doing? We're praying. That's why we called it Wednesday morning prayer. It's not complicated. The title of my message today, I want to continue speaking on the supernatural. And the title of my message today is simply this. It's the power gifts. The power gifts gifts. You know, spiritual gifts are something that maybe you've heard, if you've been around church, you've maybe heard people talk about spiritual gifts. Some people go, oh, well, what's your spiritual gift? And, and they talk, you know, let's compare spiritual gifts. And uh, Spiritual gifts are an amazing part of the Christian walk and are needed in the church to fulfill our role in what Jesus would have us do to reach the world. Let's go to the Bible and look at a couple things. Paul writes in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 1. He says, now about the gifts of the Spirit, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. He goes on in verse 4. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but in all of them and in everyone, it is the same God at work. Now to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. Just in this section, Paul uh, tells us a couple of pretty key uh, bits of information when it comes to spiritual gifts. The first is this, that there are different ones. There are many different gifts. There's not just one, but there are many different gifts. It's not all the same, and different people have different gifts. The second one is this, the Spirit is the one that distributes them. It's the Spirit. So when you look at other people and go, how come they've got this? How come they're this? How come they're the?" Well, it's the Spirit distributing them. Why? I don't know. God is sovereign. I'll ask him one day on behalf of you. But I don't know why, but it's the Spirit, and he distributes them. And these gifts are amazing, but they have a purpose. What is the purpose? There's three main reasons for God giving us spiritual gifts. The first is this. It's for the building up of the church. First Corinthians 14 verse 12, it says, so it is with you since you are eager for the gifts of the spirit to try and excel in those that build up the church. Your spiritual gift that you have is not for your own amusement. It's not for your own glory. They have been given to you so that you can help build up the church. The second is this, it's to be a witness for Jesus by proving evidence that he is alive. Hebrews chapter two, verse four, God also testified to it by signs, wonders, and various miracles, and by gifts of the Holy Spirit distributed according to his will. When you are operating in the gifts of the Spirit, it's a testimony that God is alive, that God is real, that God is who the Bible says he is. 
The last one is this. It's to meet the needs of individual people. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 10. Each one of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. We're all a part of the body of Christ and we each have a role to play. And when we operate in the gifts that God has given us, it helps us build up one another and meet the individual needs of those in our community. Throughout the New Testament, we see actually many different gifts that God has given to the church. We don't have time to go through all of them today, but we have time this week in your connect group to go over them. In fact, I want to encourage you that if you are not a part of a connect group, this week is the time to join because within our connect groups this week, we're going to be going over all the different gifts that are listed in the New Testament. We're going to do a spiritual gifts test in it where you fill out all these questions and answers and everything, and it's going to help you. It's not foolproof, but it's going to help you kind of understand maybe more the gifts that God has put on your life. And so I want to encourage you, sign up for a connect group, get involved in that. That's going to be happening this week. Uh, But today, I don't want to focus on all the gifts that Jesus gave the church. Today, I want to focus on the power gifts, the gifts that you receive once you are baptized in the Holy Spirit. We talked about baptism in the Holy Spirit throughout this whole series. It's a separate event from salvation. When you get saved, uh, uh, Jesus, he, you accept him into all, your heart, but Jesus doesn't come and live in your heart. The Holy Spirit does. It's indwelling, but there's a separate event that we see in scripture where the Holy Spirit comes and it comes upon you and baptizes you. And that initial evidence is speaking in tongues that yes, the power of the Holy Spirit is on me. And that's not the only thing that happens when you get filled with the Holy Spirit. Speaking in tongues is not the only thing. You get gifts that God gives you. And these gifts are amazing. Jesus said in Acts chapter one, verse eight, wait here, uh, the the Holy Spirit's coming and he's going to come upon you in power, not in weakness, not just in a little thing, but in power. And so before we get into talking about these gifts, I want to remind you this. Never, ever put the gifts above the gift giver. Never chase after the gift more than you chase after the gift giver. Always make sure that your priorities are correct, okay? That's just my little preface, and then we're going to get into it. Let's get back to 1 Corinthians, and we'll pick up where we left off with what Paul is saying here to this church and to us today. In verse 7, I want to read it again. Now to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. To one... There is given through the Spirit a message of wisdom, to another a message of knowledge by means of the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by that one Spirit, to another miraculous power, to another prophecy, to another distinguishing between spirits, to another speaking in different kinds of tongues, and still to another the interpretation of tongues. All these are the work of one and the same Spirit, and he distributes them to each one just as he determines. Paul tells us here uh, that these gifts are a manifestation of the Spirit. So once you are baptized in the Holy Spirit, you can expect to see these gifts beginning to operate in your life. You have access to each one of these gifts. But God, in his wisdom and sovereignty that I don't fully understand, He just seems to choose different people to pour out a fuller measure of some of these gifts on their life. We're going to talk a little bit about that in just a moment. But I really believe, I want to tell you, I believe from the Word of God and from the experience that I see that backs up the Word of God, that every believer that has been baptized in the Holy Spirit has access to each one of these gifts, each one. It's amazing. There's nine gifts that Paul mentions here. And I just got to warn you, today I'm going to teach. Uh, I, I love to preach. That's my style. I'm a preacher. But today I'm going to put on my teaching hat a little bit. You can call me uh, Mr. Aiton today. And uh, it's better than my mom. My mom's a teacher. They used to call her Miss Satan. And, uh, and 
that's not good. And so I'm Mr. Ayton. And, and we're going to go through this. And, and there, there's nine different gifts, gifts of the Holy Spirit that Paul mentions, and they can be broken up into three categories. The first category is this. It's the gifts of revelation. And under, these, uh, under this category, we can see word of wisdom, word of knowledge, and the discerning of spirits. In the next category, we see the gifts of power. This is faith, healings, and miraculous powers. And in the third section, we can see that the gifts of the mouth, and these are prophecy, tongues, and interpretations of tongues. And so today, I want to go back and I want to teach all these things today and what they mean and how they can impact your life. Let's go back to the gifts of revelation. The first one is this. It's the word of wisdom. Have you ever found yourself in a meeting, in a situation, and you have no idea what to say, you have no idea what to do, there's a decision that needs to be made, there's justice that needs to be delivered, and you have no idea what to do, and all of a sudden, maybe it's a prayer, maybe you feel the presence of God come upon you, and you just begin to speak, and stuff starts coming out of your mouth, and you're wondering, where is this coming from? This is the supernatural gift of wisdom. The supernatural use of God's wisdom to meet different situations and different needs that you have. In the Bible, we see this come out in many different ways. In Acts chapter 7, it's through the interpretation of dreams. In Revelations 13 and 17, it's through the interpretation of different events and different situations. In Colossians 4 verse 5, it's wisdom in dealing with people outside of the church. In Colossians chapter 1, it's the wisdom of skill in imparting Christian truth. In James chapter 1, it's wisdom to live uprightly. In Luke 21, Acts 4 and Acts 6, it's the wisdom to defend the cause of Christ even in the face of danger. In Matthew 13, Mark 6, Acts 6, it's the wisdom to interpret and apply scripture. In 1 Kings chapter 3, even though it's Old Testament, God came upon Solomon and he distributed wisdom to him, gave him an unbelievable amount of wisdom in order to dispense justice correctly. If you remember that story, the two mothers and the baby. Also in John chapter eight, I know I just read through a lot of scriptures. You can write them down and go look at them in your personal time. Here's what's amazing. As Christians, we all, have, even if you haven't been baptized in the Holy Spirit, you have access to the wisdom of God. But when you get full of the Holy Spirit, we're talking about an increased measure here of wisdom. That's why there's some people in our world that just seem to be dripping in wisdom. It's not just experience. It's not just a long life. I've seen 22-year-old young people that just, just when they speak, wisdom is coming out of their mouth. And I look at it and go, that's not experience. You haven't lived what you're speaking. That must be the Holy Spirit, the gift of wisdom coming through you. Just this week, Kate and I were doing a, an interview uh, online, uh, talking with some friends and talking about life and everything, and they asked us a question, and it was about faith, and there was this question about what's the difference between vibrant faith and stagnant faith, and, and, and the question came, and quickly in my head, I'm like, God, give me help, help. God, help me, right? You know my head, but you know, on the camera, I'm like, yeah, well, you know, really that different. If you need time to think, you just repeat the question, right? That's a little, that's a little gift, right? You know, hey, man, that's a great question. The difference between vibrant praise and between stagnant, and that gives you like a good 10 seconds to really go, God, help me, right? And I just began, and as, and as I did that, I began to speak, and I began to give this answer, and as I was giving the answer, this is when you know it's cool. This is how fun God is. I'm giving the answer, and as I'm speaking it out, yes, it's me. Yes, it's me speaking. No one's taking over my body. But as this stuff is coming out, I'm going, oh, this is fantastic. <laughs> Have you ever had that moment? I'm like, where is this coming from? This is amazing. And, it, and I don't say that arrogantly because I know it's not me. I have, and, I, and this answer came out and I could feel Kate was next to me and I could feel like her loving eyes looking at me. Who is this man? Who is this man I married? Right? I'm, just, I'm just a man full of the Holy Ghost. That's all I am. And this answer, and I knew in that moment, here's the amazing thing. I knew in that moment I was operating in this gift of wisdom. 
It's not me, I, I tell you. I'd never thought about that thought. I'd never written it down. I'd never communicated it to people. But as I began to talk about this idea, and I'm going, man, this is, this is God. I know that, this, and I felt his presence as I began to speak. His supernatural wisdom is available to you today. Uh, the second gift in this gifts of revelations is the word of knowledge. Oh, this is, this is one of my favorite ones. This is one, and Paul gives us permission to earnestly seek after gifts. This is one that I constantly seek after. This is the supernatural awareness of facts or information that you would never know at all unless God gives them to you. Some biblical examples of this is Jesus' knowledge of Nathaniel and John 1, or the woman at the well, remember? They said, you're not married. You've actually been married all these times, lady. Uh, when Peter's discernment of sin in Acts chapter 5, and Paul's foreknowledge about the shipwreck that he was going to be a part of in Acts chapter 27. This is, this is an amazing gift. <clears throat> The point of this gift is not so that you can look like a fortune teller or be a charlatan or know information about people. In fact, I believe that God is actually very careful with who he distributes this gift to because it takes a lot of maturity and a lot of humility in order to receive these gifts. Because this gift of knowledge, you'll begin to know things about someone else, but the whole point is this, it's to reveal God not to reveal yourself. You don't just say, hey, I know this about you and walk away with a puffed chest. Have you, you know, remember, you, you feel kind of like the prophet when the prophet would come into town, you'd confess all your sins quickly before you came to church because they thought they're gonna call you out. It's not about trying to be, it's always about pointing people back to Jesus. There's a great story that happened a few years ago. A man by the name of Sean Boltz, who's a uh, pastor in America, very prophetic, written some amazing books on, on prophecy and word of knowledge and all this kind of stuff. And, and it was actually the, the very, the very uh, first night of our church here in Manila. We were having our opening service in the Metro Walk in a little place called the Music Hall. And at that very same time, he was in Kuala Lumpur at my sister's church. Uh, he had never met my sister before. He arrived and he met my sister at the beginning of the service. They said, hi, my sister's name uh, is Jemima Varighese. That's her last name. Uh, she married an Indian Australian guy called Mark Varighese. They're my old pastors. I love them dearly. But her name is Jemima Varighese. He'd never met them before. He was preaching for the very first time. It was a friend of a friend that connected them. And so they met. And then he said, excuse me, I just need to go. And what he does is before he speaks in a service, and uh, he goes into a room and he'll just sit down in a room and he goes, okay, God, speak to me. And he'll begin to write for 30 minutes, just pieces of information uh, that God begins to download him. I, I mean, I'm talking like, it, it's, it's some crazy stuff that, that he does. And so he got up and, he, and he's speaking and then he begins to pull out his paper and goes, okay, so he begins to call out people and, and some amazing things, right? He's calling out, okay, this person, this, amazing. Uh, my sister's sitting on the front row, and I know this story because we've actually got a recording of it. And my sister's sitting on the front row, and he goes, okay, Jemima, um, does the date April 22 mean anything to you? Now, some of you skeptics already are like, oh, come on. You know, this sounds like one of those movies. Does the date April 22, you know, oh, I mean April. I, I mean, it, it, you know, does the date in the first half of the year mean anything? Oh, yes, it does. And, and people that are suckers are, are looking for some hope. So yeah, 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 yeah. You know, you know, you know those old charts, you know, with the ear things in their ear and they see the information before. So some of the skeptics would say it, right? But, but I promise you this story is 100% true. Because does April 22 mean anything to you? And she goes, yeah, that, that's my husband's birthday. He goes, oh, okay. Uh, all right, well, this is then for you. He had a word of knowledge. He goes, this is for you. And he looked at her. The church is packed. There's about a 1,000 people sitting in the building, and there's hundreds of people in the overflow rooms. And, and the church knew who Kate and I were because uh, we were a part of the church, uh, and we'd preached there many times. And so he said, I've written down these letters. I don't know what they mean. Uh, I hope you do. And he goes, do these letters mean anything to you? A-I-T-O-N. <laughs> If you don't know what that spells out, it spells out her maiden name, which is my last name. On the recording, the person sitting next to my sister goes, oh my God! <laughs> right. 
And, 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 they, and the church blew up because they all knew that that was her maiden name because they knew Kate and I very well, and that's our last name. And, and she yells at that, that's my maiden name. He goes, okay. And, and she goes, Mark is, is with my brother right now. Mark was with us on that first night that we were opening our church here in the Philippines. And she goes, Mark is with my brother right now. They're opening the church in Manila. He goes, okay, then this is a word of God for your family. And he began to prophesy, which we'll get to. He began to prophesy about Kate and I sitting in a meeting in Malaysia about how where we were, God was going to use our family to bring revival to the nation, that we were going to see miracles and breakthroughs, and just began to prophesy, and it all started with the word of knowledge. And you know what it did? We heard that message that night, and it was the first night of church, and it built our faith incredibly to believe. And you know what I felt like? I felt like, hey, God cared about me. That, that I wasn't even in the room, and I still got a prophecy, not even in there. And he just spelled out A-I-T-O. I have no idea. People lose it. That, what does the word of knowledge do? It points people to God. It reveals the greatness of God. This gift can melt the unbeliever's heart and capture them. And I'll, I, I'll be honest with you, it's a gift that I pray that God would pour out on me. It's something that I want. It's happened to me a few times where there's been supernatural pieces of information, but it's something I'd love to operate more and why. Because to me, man, if, there, if there's something that'll grab the heart of an unbeliever, it's something that nobody else knows. How do you know that? Jesus told me and Jesus loves you. I tell you, they, they're going to run to the altar as fast as they can. It must point to Jesus and not to selfish gain. The last gift in this revelationary gifts, it's the discerning of spirits. And note here, it's the plural, uh, the spirits. The Bible talks about three spirits. It talks about the spirit of God, the spirit of man, and then Satan and evil spirits. And so we got to understand, and we've talked about this a lot, in the Philippines, this is easy to talk about. We are surrounded by supernatural evil and good spirits all around. And this, and we know in the Philippines, it's not hard. People that don't go to church understand that we got spirits happening around you. Uh, white lady, right? We got all these things happening everywhere. And uh, this gift of discernment is distinguishing, discerning, and judging, discerning between what is good spirits and what is evil spirits. And this implies that such discernment, it requires a gift of God. Examples of this in the New Testament include Jesus. He'd cast out demons through ministry of the Holy Spirit in Matthew 12. The unclean spirit in the slave girl in Philippi in Acts chapter 16. And the evil spirit at work in Elmas, the sorcerer, in Acts chapter 13. Can I tell you, where our world is at right now, we need this gift more than ever. We need the gift of the Holy Spirit to discern the spirits more than ever. This is such a key for leadership as well. If you're a leader, this is something that you should chase after. I need to understand what is an evil spirit and what is a spirit of God. Why? Because there's so many evil spirits beginning to come into even the church. Progressive Christianity, all this crazy stuff where people take small bits of truth from the Bible. So it sounds kind of right, but they mix it with new age or just straight up anti-Christian theology and talking. And so they're pulling people away from the God of the Bible and they're twisting it and misinterpreting it. And what, it, what is it? It's an evil spirit. And we need to stand up and be able to discern and call it out. That's evil. It's wrong. Silence in the name of Jesus. But then we need to discern. Is it a good spirit? Yes. Is this of God? Yes. It's a great gift to have. Uh, the next uh, category is the gifts of power. These are awesome. The first one is this, it's the gift of faith. And this is different from our saving faith, or, and it's even different from faithfulness, which is one of the fruits of the Spirit. This is an impartation of faith by the Holy Spirit for special circumstances. Uh, for example, th this is faith given by the Holy Spirit for us and maybe it's protection in times of danger or for divine provision or those really huge walls or huge giants that we just have no idea how we're going to get over. But God gives us this infusion of faith to believe 
that God can actually come through. You know, Paul exhibited this gift many times in conjunction with other gifts as well, but we see it in restoring Eutychus in Acts chapter 20, in casting out a demon in Philippi in Acts 16, and healing the lame man in Lystra in Acts chapter 14. This gift, ready? This gift on people's lives, it either scares people or inspires them. Like I'm around some people, with this, with this gift incredibly. I, I believe I've operated in this gift in, in, in many different moments in my life. And I found even around me, it either scares people or it inspires people. Yeah. These are huge steps of financial faith. These are believing that no sickness is too difficult for God to heal, that no leap is too high. This is not stupidity. It's the Holy Spirit giving you faith to believe. One of my, my very close friends, has challenged me even in the last year in their business as, as they have done things that other people would say are just stupid and crazy. But I actually believe that they have the gift of faith on their life. And they are now, even after very tense times, even after very hard struggles and stretching times, they're now walking and about to even more walk into a season of incredible provision, of incredible reward. Why? Because of the gift of faith that was on their life. Could any person do it? Absolutely not. There are only certain situations that people can handle if they have the gift of faith. If they don't, they'll be crushed. They'll run away. They'll give up. But when you have the gift of faith, you can look at a situation and go, even though man would say it's impossible, my God, it is possible with him. Nothing is impossible for my God. People will call you stupid. People will call you crazy. When we took on this building, my own father, he didn't call me stupid, but man, he was worried a little bit. It scared him a little bit, but he didn't run away. He prayed with me and he stood with me and he stood by me. And we're now in a miracle. And now I'm believing for a new miracle. Now I'm believing for a bigger building. Now I'm believing for more churches and more countries and more. Now we're believing it scares some people, but it inspires others. Come on, if you're a leader, you need to chase this gift, the gift of faith. It takes faith to walk in faith. Amen. The next in these power gifts is this, it's the gift of healing. We kind of talked about divine healing a couple of weeks ago. And again, I want you to note that this is the gifts here in the original Greek as well. It's actually a plural. It's not the gift of healing. It's the gifts of healing. And this is a supernatural ability to apply healings in a number of different circumstances or different illnesses or different afflictions. It's not just one healing for one disease. It's many different diseases that this can come. Now, you got to understand this. this. This does not make people healers. You know, sometimes the, 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 the title gets put on people, he's a faith healer, faith healer, and then it becomes charlatan, and then it's like, I'm going to heal you, but first, put a seed. Give a seed. Come on, let's take up the offering before we heal people, right? And, and, uh, and that's not us. We, that's not our church. We don't believe in that. We, we believe that healing is free, that you don't have to pay for it, that it comes directly from heaven. And the purpose of the healing, this, is never to point back to the person, but it's always to point to Jesus. He is our healer. He's just operating through our faith. But Jesus is the healer. And I believe that every Christian has the ability to pray, to lay hands, and to see Jesus heal. But there, this is the reality. God just seems to pour out this gift on healing on different people in just an abundant measure. And it's amazing. People, they just, they just see healings after healings, after healings, and they pray and they lay hands and cancers go and eyes open and ears open and the dead are even raised. And it's inspiring. And I, I think this is something that we should come before God and say, God, pour out this gift. I want to see the gift of healing on my life. There's people that do it. Someone that inspires me is, is someone very close to our church, Dr. Dennis Mpwembo. He, uh, he's on our spiritual oversight for Favor Church and the future and where we're going as a church. He's actually one of our oversight that speaks into Kate and I's lives and brings accountability and, and brings spiritual oversight into where we're going as a church. And I love to sit with him as he tells stories 
about how people just get healed. He's originally from Africa, and, and I don't know why I said it like that as well. Africa, I know it just came out, didn't it? From Africa, but he says Africa. And from there, and the healings of people where, he just, where, where people have no eyeballs in their sockets, and he's laid hands on them, and he's seen eyeballs begin to grow in front of his eyes. Ears that were, were deformed begin to grow and form, and, and cancer's gone, tumors, huge tumors on the neck, and they lay hands, and, and they, he, he would just feel his hand go down, 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 as the tumor would disappear. Man, there is a, there is a, a gift of healing that's on his life came to our church and he preached. He prophesied and prayed for healing and people got healed. There is a gift. He doesn't make him a healer. You know what it does? It just, just means that he's available. And he's been obedient. I'm going to talk about that in just a moment. The, the next is this. It's miraculous powers. Now, don't run ahead. Don't get crazy on me. I'm not talking about Thor. I'm not talking about powers, the power of Odin. It's nothing like that. This is actually kind of connected to the discerning of spirits. Discerning of spirits is when you can see, okay, what spirit is what. Miraculous powers is is when you begin to to see the spiritual world and powers and casting out demons and deliverance beginning to happen. Jesus showed this many times. There's many new texts. I've already read out examples of when Jesus did it, Paul did it, the disciples did it, where they cast out demons. And I tell you what, this is needed in today's age. This is why demons have gotten a little bit more sneaky, right? Like in the New Testament, when you're talking about demon-possessed man, there's one story of Jesus, and he turned up, and this demon-possessed man was living in the cemetery, and he was, yeah, he's coming out, and it's kind of almost like the cartoon demons, like, yeah, right? You know, they're talking, I am here, I am legion, right? And it's all crazy. Uh, but <laughs> here's the thing. That, that still happens today. Don't get me wrong. We've had manifestations where things happen, uh, but, but it, 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 it's not that obvious anymore. And there's actually a lot of people walking around full of demons and full of evil spirits, but people don't realize it because they're not writhing on the floor like a snake or spitting up. This is where we see miraculous power come in, especially in the Philippines. Here's the thing. We know it's there, but we tend to just put up with it here. But let me tell you, the power of Jesus through his Holy Spirit and this gift, we can actually see deliverance of this. And I tell you, when the power of Jesus comes against it, they may look cool. They may look like everything's all right. But when the power of Jesus comes, you'll see them change real quickly. You'll see that demon come out. You'll see the mouth begin to froth. The eyes begin to go. The voice begin to change. Woo! It's a little bit scary uh, when you when you see it for the first time. But when you know that greater is he that lives in you than he that lives in the world, and you are full of the Holy Spirit and the fire of God, you got nothing to be afraid of. In our church, uh, because this is such a huge thing, especially here in the Philippines, uh, later on in the year, we're going to be doing an equipping course in our church that we're going to start this year and just run it constantly on deliverance on all this type of stuff. And it's going to be crazy and fun and amazing because we want to teach the proper way. We want to teach the way that the Bible teaches us. But this is an amazing gift, the miraculous powers to see demons cast out, demons fleeing. Uh, The last section of gifts is the gifts of the mouth. Prophecy here. That's our first one. Prophecy is divinely inspired declaration of the purposes of God. It may involve the future, but it also may be about current issues. And prophecy is such an amazing tool that God uses to help build up the church. This is what Paul writes about prophecy. 1 Corinthians 14, a few chapters later, says this, Follow the way of love and eagerly desire gifts of the Spirit, especially prophecy. For anyone who speaks in a tongue does not speak to people but to God. Uh, That's your personal gift of speaking in tongues. Indeed, no one understands them. They utter mysteries by the Spirit. But the one who prophesies speaks to people for their strengthening, encouraging, and comfort. Anyone who speaks in a tongue edifies himself. Remember, this is the personal gift of it. But the one who prophesies edifies the church. 
I would like every one of you to speak in tongues, but I would rather have you prophesy. The one who prophesies is greater than the one who speaks in tongues, unless someone, so now we're talking about the public gift of speaking in tongues. I know it's confusing, but we'll get there. Unless someone interprets so that the church may be edified. Paul here is speaking about the power of prophesying. And what's he doing? He's encouraging all of us to chase it. He's encouraging all of us to do this. And prophecies, it should not be despised, but they should be tested. Paul writes later on in the same chapter, verse 29, two or three prophets should speak and the others should weigh up carefully what is said. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 20, do not treat prophecies with contempt, but test them all. Hold on to what is good. Now, within a church context, we have parameters on different things. And even though we should all chase after prophecy, within a church and a community context, we teach the parameters of this because there's a lot of crazy people in the world. And so in our church, we just don't encourage people to go around and just start prophesying over over, over any other people. We actually encourage people, if you've got a prophetic word about someone, go to another trusted person and say, hey, I feel the Lord is is giving me this word for this person and and I wanna speak it. What do you think? Why? Because all the prophecies should be tested. If someone has spoken a word over you and you feel, oh, you know what? I I just don't think that's from God and you feel really uncomfortable about it, don't let it sit in your spirit. Take it off and put it on the shelf. Just put it there. Let it. T- I've, I've had so many prophetic words over my life that I've thought, hmm, hmm, I don't know. I'm not sure if that's the case. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it up on the shelf. And you know what's a great way of testing? If it actually happens. And if it happens, you're like, ah, uh, okay. That was, it's happening. This is a word of God because it was prophesied over me before. Prophecy is a powerful, powerful tool to build up and to edify the church, to speak into that which is not, but that which will become. Years ago, when when I was a young man, I I was a teenager uh, and, and I was going to a Christian school that was attached to a large Christian church. And even though I was, uh, you know, brought up in a Christian family, I was, uh, I, I, was not, I was not a Christian. I believed that Jesus was real, but I did not follow him at all. And I, and I just wasn't, you know, the nicest guy in high school. I was, I, you know, I was a little bit of a fun bully. I don't want to call myself a full bully. I was more of a f- fun bully. And, uh, and it, doesn't make it, it doesn't make it any better at all. I realize as I said it, it's, I'm, still, I'm still an idiot. And so... Um, and so I actually left where I was. I was living in a city called Melbourne, Australia. I left Melbourne, uh, actually came back to the Philippines, had a massive God encounter. And, uh, and when I returned to Australia, I moved to Brisbane. Brisbane is where I began to serve in my parents' church, a wonderful church called Gateway Church. And, and I began to really build my life. It eventually became a youth pastor. God really changed my heart. I went back to Melbourne and no one believed that I was a youth pastor pastor. No, sorry. No one believed that I was a Christian, right? Like I I turned up. So, so this youth group that was attached to my old school, all my friends were leaders in it. So I came that night uh, to go to youth and the youth pastor stood at the front of the church. And when I walked in, he goes, Hey, Satan, how you doing? Um, Because my name was James Satan, James Satan. And and so I like to think that's why he called me Satan. It wasn't my behavior that I was known for. Um, But that's not really an encouraging way to walk into a church meeting. Uh, You know, hi, Hi, the Prince of Darkness, welcome. And so, um, so we went into the meeting and there's a guy preaching by the name of Paul Geerling. And he was from Brisbane, but I had never met him before. He didn't know who I was. He'd never met me. I was sitting there in the front row and he preached the whole time. He got up at the end and, and, and Paul is a, now is a great friend. Uh, but at the time, I didn't really know him. He'd, he'd never met me. And he looked down at me and, and at that time I had long blonde hair and it was like, I was like a surfer, like, hey, what's up, man? And, and, he, goes, and he says, uh, uh, you uh, in the front row, I'll never forget, he pointed down and said, you in the front row, a shaggy, shaggy. <laughs> I'm like, Rrrr, screw me. And, uh, and he goes, lift up your hands. And, and so I, I lifted up my hands, right? And everyone's kind of like, <laughs> Everyone's kind of watching because everyone knew who I was, uh, but everyone knew who I had been. They didn't really know who I was. And he began to, actually, he began to do both. He began to operate in a word of knowledge. He said, right now, 
This is how you feel. You feel frustrated. You feel da-da-da. And he got a word of knowledge from God, information he didn't know. And, he just, and I'm just like, oh my gosh, this guy's right. He's frust- you're frustrated with where we're at. You think you can do this, da-da. And he goes, and then he began to prophesy. God has you in this season right now. He said, he's building a building right now. And it's going to take a long time to build this building. And it may frustrate you. But the bigger and the wider the foundation goes, I mean, the bigger this building is going to go. And you are going to turn into, you're going to become a leader in this building nation. You're going to reach people. Da-da. And he began to prophesy things. I can hear people. My friend hit the drums and it fell off his seat on the drums. I could hear people going <gasps> like that. And isn't this Satan? You know what I mean? Like, and I could hear, and, and he began to prophesy things over me. It was unbelievable. That, that happened when I would have been about 19 years old, that happened. And it took about eight years. But eight years later, I was sitting at a table where I had just been uh, elevated into a role where I had a national leadership role within youth and young adult ministries in Australia. And God brought me back to that moment when he began to prophesy over me. I thought at age 19 that I belonged at that table, how arrogant the young are, but it actually took years and some pretty tough stuff to get me to that point. And even now, I'm still beginning to walk in some of those things that he prophesied over me when I was 19 years old. That prophecy built something inside of me. It gave me faith. It edified me. It built something up. And as I began to walk in the advanced years, walk in that prophecy, I turn around and go, man, God, you've been with me since that day. You've been with me the last eight years. You've been Prophecies have the opportunity to build. Dr. Dennis M. Pumble came here and he prophesied over many people in our church and he prophesied over our church. And he said, and I'll never forget this because I've got it written in my church, in my office right there, painted on the wall. And it says, that God does not need to borrow a page out of history to write the next chapter of your story. And I remember him saying that. I'm like, oh, yeah, we're going to do something that's never been done before. God doesn't need to redo something with us. We're going to do something fresh. And it built me up and it built the church up. That's the power of prophecy. Are there weirdos? Yes. Are there false prophets? Yes. Are there people that get things wrong? Yes. It might be a little messy, but don't let that scare you from what God could actually do in your life. The last two, and these kind of go together, the last two gifts are the gifts of the mouth are tongues and interpretation of tongues. Now, even within that, and again, I don't have time to go through all of this. I'll teach on it another time. But Paul, when he writes, you can see from what he writes that there is a gift. I talked about this last week, a public gift and a private gift. The private gift is for everyone. Everyone can speak in tongues. But right here, Paul is talking about the public gift. And this is for someone to stand up and deliver a message of tongues, which comes from God. And it's for the purpose of building up and edifying the church. It's basically like prophecy, except it's a message in tongues. And it's connected to having someone who has the gift of interpretation of tongues. If you're wondering, what's that? Well, you'll know it when someone begins to speak in tongues and you'll be hearing it like they're speaking to you in plain English or plain Filipino and it'll just come to you. Now, a lot of times people are like, well, how come we don't do that in church these days? Well, a lot of times we don't do it in church. When I grew up, man, I grew up old school. We used to have, we used to have, <laughs> man, this is so good. We used to have like a microphone at the front of church that anybody could just walk up to and would just grab it and it'd be like, thus saith the Lord and begin to get some of you old school William you remember this or they would come up they'd grab the microphone and start going shaka ra ba 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 they'd put it down then somebody else would go the Lord saith to thee and, and it's amazing that God always used to speak in, in old King James English right <laughs> isn't that amazing God always spoke in old King James English back in the 80s you know he, he's changed his language in the last 30 years and and so we used to do that a lot. And, and, but here's actually a cool thing that started happening. We started reaching a lot more people. And there's a lot of random people that walk into church. And so now we don't have a microphone at the front anymore because we don't know everybody that walks into church. Back in the, in the day, we kind of knew everybody that was there. But now we don't know. We got so many new people coming to our church. I just don't know who you are. So I'm not going to let you get up on the microphone and say, thus saith the Lord, you're all going to die, right? I just don't want, I don't want anyone to do that. It, and so we, you know, we do it. But, you know, in, in our leadership meetings, things like that, this can still come out. 
It's a wonderful gift for the church. We, we don't see it as much today, but it's still operational, and it is a wonderful gift for the church. So when will these gifts stop? When, when will they be over? Some people preach that they're already over, that they were only used in biblical times, and, and these gifts have stopped being used now. Well, Paul writes in 1 Corinthians 13, the next chapter after 12, he says, love never ends. As for prophecies, they will pass away. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when the perfect comes, the partial will pass away. So what Paul is saying here is these, these gifts that we're talking about that, I, that I've just written about in the last chapter, these gifts are going to pass away at some point. They are. They're going to be useless at some point. When are they going to be useless? When are they not going to be needed again? When the perfect comes. Who is the only thing that is perfect? It's Jesus. And when Jesus comes back again, we won't need these gifts anymore because we'll have Jesus. But until that time, the Holy Spirit comes upon us and chooses to operate this way in the church. We need them. We should use them. Paul says we should chase after them. So you might be thinking to yourself, well, how can I? Man, this sounds really cool. I love, I love this. How can I begin to operate with these gifts in my life? Well, it's two simple things. Number one, you got to get full of the Holy Spirit. And number two, you have to obey. You know, to operate, even though faith is one of these, one of these gifts, really the baseline of operating in any of these gifts is just the baseline faith. I believe that this can happen. When we talked about uh, the gifts of healing and the gift of faith, the, the gift of healing and the gift of faith are actually very, very connected. Because you've got to have extraordinary faith to believe that as I pray for you, you're going to get healed. When Paul, uh, when Peter, sorry, in Acts chapter 4 said, silver and gold I have not, but what I have I give you, stand up and he picked up the guy. He was operating in a gift and an in an extraordinary gift of faith that he knew that as he was about to pick this guy up, that, he, that it was going to happen. And as he picked him up, he switched from the gift of faith and just went straight into the gift of healing. And that guy was healed instantly. It, take, it actually just takes faith to step out and believe. It takes faith to step out and give a word in tongues. It takes faith to step out and discern a spirit. It takes faith to step out and to say, hey, I'm going to... So, so what is faith? Really, faith is obeying God. You'll, you'll never operate in these gifts if you don't obey God. Because God will say, jump. And if you start arguing with God with, well, when? How high? Should I jump with my legs out or should I jump up or how should I jump? And, and you spent all this time and, and, and God just wanted you to jump. God just wanted you to step out in faith. God just wanted you to take that, that leap. God just, you know, wanted that healing to come. God, God wanted that, that word of knowledge was just, you know, God to speak to you. That word. It, it takes that obedience to listen. An obedient heart, listen to me, an obedient heart opens the floodgates of heaven to be poured out in your life. Some people preach about sacrifice. You need to sacrifice. God wants your sacrifice. Sacrifice, sacrifice. God, God is actually more impressed with your obedience than your sacrifice. That's what he wants, your obedience more than your sacrifice. He wants your heart. Operating in these power gifts of the Holy Spirit, it requires an obedience to step out in faith and to believe that God is at work and he will do what he's promised you to do. I am believing in our church for people to be baptized in the Holy Spirit and beginning to operate. The, the Philippines, Metro Manila, we need a church, not just full of people that know about the Bible, but people that know God and operate in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. In Connect Groups this week, you're gonna learn about other gifts, gifts that Jesus has given the church. Jesus gave the church the gift of the apostles, the prophet, the teacher, the evangelist, and the pastor, right? Those are, are five gifts that, that Jesus has given the church. There's other gifts that Paul talks about, the gift of helps, uh, the gift of admin, the gift of celibacy. Come on, that was a gift that I missed out on, and I'm so thankful to God. I don't have the gift of celibacy, the gift of martyrdom. These are all different things that 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 
are, are gifts within the church that Christ has given the church. But these ones that I talked about today, these are the gifts of the power of the Holy Spirit. These are the gifts that will fall on you when you get baptized in the Holy Spirit. Next week, listen to me, next week, I so wish that we could do this in person, but we can't, but that's okay because God is more powerful than the internet and he can operate. Next week is what we call in, in modern day church the uh, Pentecost Sunday. It's the uh, same amount of days after Easter, the same amount of Sundays after Easter that Acts chapter 2 in the Bible happened where the fire of God fell and people were baptized in the Holy Spirit for the first time. We're going to be celebrating that next week. And I'm actually going to be wrapping up this series on the supernatural. And I think it's perfect to wrap it up on Pentecost Sunday. It's an amazing day to talk about just the power of the Holy Spirit. But come on, as a church, I, I want to encourage you, stretch out. Begin to stretch out. Begin to believe, God, if this, if this is real, if what James talked about, if what James read in the Bible is real, if you can believe that God sent a flood, if you can believe that a little boy killed Goliath, if you can believe that Jesus healed people, cast out demons, died and rose again, if you can believe that 11 of the remaining disciples all basically got killed except John, he was the only one that didn't get killed for his faith, but he got put in a, in a pot of boiling oil and then he wrote a book called Revelation. If you can believe that, then surely you can believe that the Holy Spirit is still operational today and He wants to use you to reach people for His kingdom. The gifts of the Holy Spirit are not to make you feel better and build you up so that you're amazing. So that They're so that we can point people to Jesus, so we can edify people, so we can build up the church and we can give God glory and extend His kingdom. That's the point. So where you are, even right now, if you're saying, man, I want this, just lift your hands to heaven and say, God, fill me with your Holy Spirit. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Pour right now. I believe that God is so powerful. You don't even need a band. You don't need the lights wherever you are in your room right now. God, fill me with your Holy Spirit. Baptize me with your Holy Spirit. Come, God. Come, pour your spirit out. Those who are hungry, those who are obedient, come, pour your spirit out right now. Come, pour your spirit out. Pour your spirit out. Fullness, God. Those, those that have already been full, God, we pray for an overflowing now, an overflowing, a refilling, a refilling now, the spirit of God. Let these gifts become evident. Let these gifts begin to come to the forefront, Lord God. Oh, let it flow. Let it flow. Let it flow, God. Let it flow. Fill them now. 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 Fill them with your power, Holy Ghost. Fill them with your power. You know, maybe you're watching right now. If you're having a moment with God, keep going wherever you are, but maybe you're watching and, and you don't have a relationship with Jesus. Maybe you haven't come to that point where you've acknowledged your sin that separates you from God. Right now, I want to give you a chance to respond. The Bible is so clear that we've all sinned. We've all been separated by, from God, but it's through what Jesus did on the cross and his eventual resurrection is the power of his resurrection that actually gives us access to God. All we must do is come before him, humble ourselves, ask him to forgive us of our sins. If you've never done that before, maybe you did this a long, long time ago, but you've walked away. I want to invite you to pray a prayer with me. It's a simple prayer. It, there's nothing magical about the prayer. The prayer's not even written in the Bible, but it's, it's a prayer that reflects what the Apostle Paul writes in Romans chapter 10. He says that if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord, you will be saved. So if you want to pray a prayer that reflects that, come on, can you pray with me right now? Say, dear Lord Jesus, come to you right now and I ask you to forgive my sin. I believe that you died on the cross but you defeated death and you rose again. So right now I ask, please come into my life. Be my Lord and Savior. Fill me with your spirit. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Hey, if you prayed that prayer, it's the greatest decision that you'll ever make in your life. And I really want to encourage you, reach out to us. 
scan that QR code or text that number if you're within the Philippines. And just let us know because the Christian walk, it's not meant to be done alone. You know, I, I want to encourage you, if, if you want to know more about this, there's so much great information online. And maybe you could rewatch this sermon, write down all those scriptures, go and read all those scriptures. I know I preached a little bit longer today. There's so much I, I wanted to kind of fit in here today. But I really believe, I, I just want to say this. I really believe that when it comes to the gifts of power, the gifts of the Holy Spirit, uh, sometimes power without knowledge can be dangerous. And so that's why I wanted to teach about it today. You know, even prophecy. I said we're, we're doing a discernment equipping course. Uh, sorry, uh, like a, a deliverance one. We're actually doing one on prophecy as well. If this is something that you want to grow in and learn in, later on this year, we're going to be opening this up. And it's actually going to be only a certain amount of people per uh, per, per course that we do. And we're going to train you. We're going to teach you. We're going to pray for you. And we're going to allow you to actually practice and actually begin to practice that gift as it comes upon you in a safe environment with great parameters uh, and great teaching and people involved. So I'm excited. Next week, get ready. I want you to get ready in your spirit for Pentecost Sunday as we celebrate the Holy Ghost falling in Acts chapter 2 and what it means for us today in a supernatural life. If this is your first time watching, we'd love to connect with you. Please let us know that it's your first time. We've even got a little Zoom lobby right now. If you're watching this live, a Zoom lobby that you can jump in. We've got team in there. We just want to say hi, connect with you, get to know a little bit more about your story. Remember, we're doing spiritual gifts in our connect group this week. If you're not a part of one, sign up today. You will get contacted and you'll be able to join a connect group online this week. And it will be amazing. Love you. God bless you, church. Have an incredible week in Jesus' name.